All right, welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at the method two. Method two under the solution to first order linear differential equation. So we have already in our previous video we looked at the method one, which is the undetermined coefficient. The, so that is the undetermined coefficient for first order differential equation. But remember, we have another one in the second order and higher order. But I want you to stick to it that. That one we looked at it in the previous video is the undetermined coefficient for first order differential equation. So in, in this video, we are going to look at the method two, and that is using the integrating factor. So we are going to see, you see, there is an integrating factor in an exact differential equation. And we also have integrating factor here in first order differential equation. All right, so you have to know the difference between the two so that you won't contradict yourself. Very good. So the method two is using That is the IF using the integrating factor. <clears throat> so now let's look at that one. Uh, trust me, you are going to love it. Alright? Very good. So if or in some books you will see rho rho, which is the term of x is the integrating is the integrating factor is the integrating factor then then if we multiply if we multiply to If we multiply two by dy dx plus p of x y is equal to p of x. All right. So all that we are saying here is that if you have to choose rho in terms of x or mu in terms of x to be our integrating factor. Then what it means is that when we multiply or whenever whenever we have a first order differential equation and it's in the form of non-homogeneous and we multiply it through by the integrating factor, we are going to get the solution to that equation. Alright, so that is what we are talking about it here. So we are going to multiply the row or the mu, which one do you think we should go by? In exact differential equation, we use the mu. So here yeah, I would like to use the row, but anyhow, anyway, it is it's just that you have to get the concept, alright? So don't worry, I will use the mu. I will use the mu. So now we multiply the mu. by is equal to the mu alright so we are going to call this equation 1 then we call this equation 2 alright so we multiply the mu which is the integrating factor throughout like what we are doing in an exact differential equation. Alright. Then, now you can see something here. Watch. You can see that the left hand side, the left hand side, which is
Alright, you can see that this left hand side is coming from. I hope you can see that. Say, watch, I don't want to tell you. See, leave this, differentiate this. Leave this, differentiate this. Then, leave what you differentiate and differentiate what you leave. I hope you can see that. Alright, so you can see that. This is coming from a derivative, a derivative of mu in terms of x multiplying by y. We can see that this is coming from a product rule of mu and y. And that is exactly what we can see here. Very good. So, we are going to name this equation 3. We are going to name this equation 3. But first of all, let's name this equation A. So that here will be 1. Then we can get equation 2 here. I hope that, is, that will be clear for you. Alright. So after multiplying the integration factor throughout, we can see that the left hand side is, is coming from a uh, Product u of mu times the y, that's the integrating factor times y. So now, by comparing, by comparing equation 1 and 2, when we compare equation 1 and 2, if you are saying that this the derivative of this is equal to this left hand side. Then it means that we can get alright as respect to s being equal to the mu in terms of x multiplying p of s. Very good. So for us to make this separable, we are Deriving something. So as to make this separable, we get d of the mu over the mu. Let me just write the mu and ignore the term of the s. It's the same thing. It's equal to p of s ds. Alright. So we can see that this is separable. And if this is separable, then we can integrate both sides. And when we integrate both sides, make sure we take a good note. Alright. And when we take, when we integrate both sides, then we get the mean equal to the integral of p of x ds. Alright, plus the c. Then, having this, we can send the mean c to this side to be equal to the integral of p of x ds. Then we can combine this to get the mean over c to be equal to the integral of p of s ds. Very good. So all that we are doing is that we are looking for the integrating factor. Alright? We are looking for the integrating factor. So for us to look for the integrating factor mean. We need to take the natural log of both sides. So, we take the natural log of both sides there and we get the to be equal to And therefore, they cancel this, so we get mean over c to be equal to integral of p of x dx. Therefore, we can get our mean in terms of x to be equal to c multiplying the integral of p of x dx. Very good. Very good. Therefore, therefore, this is our integrating factor. Therefore, we get our integrating factor to be this. 
and we are going to name that equation 3. We are going to name that equation 3. Alright. Now, so this is called the IF. This is called the right. This is called the IF. That is the integrating factor. This is not the integrating factor for an exact differential equation, but rather the integrating factor for first order differential equation. All right. So that is that is. So if this is our integrating factor, then let's now come back again. Alright, so if we are establishing that this is our integrating factor, then that is if given dy dx, that is a first order differential equation. In the standard form, in the standard form, and this is the standard form for a first order differential equation. And the IF, the IF of that, what we are going to do is that we are going to multiply this IF, that is the integrating factor, through this. Now, bear in mind that we have the integrating factor here already, this is known. But what we previously did, that one is where we don't know the integrating factor, so we were just quantifying the mu system of x throughout. But here, that is known. So we are going to multiply that throughout. And with that, we are going to get e raised to the power c, e raised to the power integral of p of s ds. To multiply dy dx plus the same way p of s dx to multiply p of s y, alright, which is equal to p of s multiplying c e raised to the power integral of p of s. Yes. Very good. Very good. So that is what we have here. Now you can see clearly that we can get rid of all the C's. Alright? We can get rid of all the C's. That is. I would like to verify something here. Alright. Now we should have replaced something by the C here. Here, to conclude that this is the integrating factor, don't worry, sorry for that, to conclude that this is the integrating factor, we put, but put C to be equal to 1. And when you do that, then you are going to get the integrating factor for the first order differential equation to be the integral of p of s dx. Alright, so this is rather the equation 3. So this is the integrating factor. Then we come and multiply that integrating factor throughout. So let's get rid of the c. It's still the same thing. Very good. Now, what we are saying is that the left hand side here is coming from a product rule. And that is coming from a product view of watch. This left hand side. Watch. See. Leave this. Differentiate this. That is why. When you differentiate y, you get y dx. So leave this. Differentiate this. Now here, you come and differentiate this, then you leave this to be equal to that. So you can see that this is coming from a product view of 
the y and the integrating factor and that is v of s ds p of s ds p of s ds which is equal to q of s e raised to the power p of s ds very good now here yeah, we need to go and find the jet don't worry don't forget that we are finding the general solution for a first order differential equation with the method of integrating factor. So we are looking for y. So what we have to do is that we need to get this y. So we have to integrate both sides to undo x. We need to integrate both sides to undo this derivative, all right? And when we do that, we get y e raised to the power integral of v of x ds, which is equal to integral of v of x, multiplying the integrating factor. All right. So for us to get for us to get the y, we need to divide both sides by this. Alright, so let's see that. Let's look at that. So when you multiply throughout, you get this particular of All right, all this over, all this over, e raised to the power b of s ds ds, and that is the integrating factor. So here you can say that. All right. So from what we have here, you can say that, but, but. The integrating factor is equal to this. So we get P of S E raised to the power integral of P of S. Oh. So we know that this gives mu in terms of S. That is all, the whole of this. Then, ds. Now, there is something that I want to let you know. You have to know that the this integral sign is affecting only this, not the one in the denominator. Not the one on the denominator. So here, yeah, we divide both sides by leaving the integral sign on top of the mu in terms of x. So this establish the general solution for a first order differential equation with the use of integrating factor. But don't forget. You can see that from the general solution, what it means is that, what it means is that, so please, I, I, and you ask and see that one, you know already. Right. What this means is that whenever you have a standard form of a first order differential equation, the first thing you need to know is to identify your P of S. One, identify your P of S. Two, then you identify the integrating factor. When A is P of S dx. So you identify your P of S. Then you come and find the integrating factor. The reason is that looking at the general solution, you will need the integrating factor. And the next thing that you need is that is three the Q of S. Then you identify your Q of S. 
So I've identified your key of it, or you can say that you can say that identify B of S and B of X. Then you find the integrating factor. And you find the integrating factor, the use of the B of S will come to you. And after getting that, you come and do the substitution. And that gives the general solution for the first order differential equation. I hope you can see that this method will be easy than the first method that we look at it, which is undeterminable efficient. But it depends. When you are restricted to use the integrating factor unit, when you are restricted to use the undetermined coefficient, you need to use that. All right, so let's look at some examples, right? The examples that we are going to solve. The example that we are going to solve is the same as the one that we saw in the undetermined coefficient. We are going to use this method to solve that one also. It's the same method, uh, the same solution that we are going to get. But the process or the method is not the same. So, in case you can't remember the solutions that we had, or uh, the general solutions that we had in using the method one in solving these same questions, that is method of undetermined coefficient for first order. Yes, I have to be specific for first order. In the same general solution you are going to get here, nothing will change. But please, what is going to change is the method. So always know the method you have to go back. If the question is not specific, if the question is just there, bam, solve the following differential equation. Then the options or the method or the method to go by is in your hands. Whether to go by method of undetermined coefficient or the integrating factor. All depends on you. All right. So, in looking at the method, the first thing to do is work B in So, the first thing is that B in standard form. That is the standard form of the first order differential equation. The third, the second stage is to identify your P of X and P of X. And the third stage is to find the integrating factor. And after getting the integrating factor, then you come and solve the general solution. All right, nothing is going to be difficult here. The only thing I'm trying knew you are going to struggle with it a lot is your calculus too. That is integral calculus. Alright, so in case you have a problem in your calculus one, don't worry, you can pause the video, go back to the playlist of our YouTube channel. We have calculus two video tutorials there. Watch it and come back and you really enjoy it. Very good. So we move on. In the same way, I may not be summing all for you. I will do some so that you go and do the rest. Alright. So yeah, let's look at the second question. You look at the solution to the second question, and that is S Y prime plus one plus X. All right, so yeah, we leave it in the standard form because that is the first step. It's good for you to know the step. Secondly, 
we need to get rid of this x. So we multiply by 1 over x. This cancel this, we get dy dx plus Alright, so having this we can see that we are in the standard form We are in the standard form so the next step is to identify P of X and P of X. So here you can see clearly that our P of X is 1 plus X over X. And our P of X is going to be E raised to the power X. Alright, so that is that for that. Now what the next thing to do again, that is finding the integral. So this is the first step. I don't need to write the steps to stay simple. Alright. So we need to go and find the integrating factor. So the integrating factor is the integral of the P of S dx. So all that we are doing is that we are going to take the integral of the v of x. Then after that, we take the exponential of the integral function. So let's move on to find the integral of v of x dx. And that is, we make it 1 over x plus x over x for it to be for it to be in a form that we like so you get means x plus x don't add any plus c here don't add any plus c now you can see that this gives me this but this one is 1 and when you integrate 1 you get x alright because we are integrating as respect to x. So that is not the integrating factor. So therefore, the integrating factor is now going to be e raised to the power Alright, so the integrating factor is going to be e raised to the power mean because we have the whole of the exponent to this. So mean s plus s. I hope you can see that. Very good. And that is here you need to do small algebra. Here don't forget that in indices, a raised to the power m times a raised to the power n is the same as a raised to the power m plus n. So, this is in this form. So, we can get this. So, we get e raised to the power m x times e raised to the power x. This is the same as this. Very good. So you can see clearly that here this will go for us to get our integrating factor to be s e raised to the power x. So now this is our integrating factor. Alright. Now if this is our integrating factor, then we go for the fourth step. That is find the general solution. So here, we don't want you to memorize the formula, just know it, alright, just know it. 
that he gets the function of y in terms of s, then here is going to be the integral of the q of s, the q of s, multiplying the integrating factor, multiplying the integrating factor, then we have to take the integral of the whole of this function. After that, then we divide by the integrating factor. All right, so then we know that after integration, you add plus C, so that is not the problem. Now let's go and do that substitution. All right, or in case you don't want to do the substitution straight forward, in case you don't want to do the substitution straight forward like that, you can do something again. And that is the same thing as what we were doing. That in the proof, in case you can remember, you now go and multiply the integrating factor through the standard form of the first order differential equation. The same thing. Okay. So you can go and multiply. This is the creative factor throughout the first order standard form of the differential equation. So y of s is equal to the integral of what is p of s? We know p of s to be, oh, I have put that part. That is e raised to the power x. e raised to the power s. Multiply by the integrating factor, and that is s e raised to the power x ds. All this over. Now, when you are doing the substitution, it will become somehow scary, but don't worry. Hope you will probably remember your integration work, so don't worry. So, the integration factor for the down 2 is going to be this. Very good. Then we add plus C. That is after being done with everything. All right. So we are going to take the integration. Now let's finish with the numerator and now come back to do the division. So here, yeah, what we have here is that we have the integral of. Don't forget. We can combine, don't forget, this x will come here, and we can combine this and this, you get e raised to the power 2s dx. So you can see what we have now. Alright. We have s e raised to the power s plus the c. But here, please watch. You then want to go and cancel this. You see, the, the integration sign here, you are not done with the integration. Alright? So you can't go over and say that this will cancel this. You dare not. So let's pick this one out. Let's pick this one out. And go and do the integration for that. And in case you can't remember your techniques for integration, then that is going to be easy for you. That is going to be easy for you. I would like to clean the question. All right, so here we are going to get, let's bring the integration out. Hmm. Now, having this, then you can see that this is coming from a technique called integration by parts. You can see that we have two functions multiplying here. So let's go by a tabular method. I have all these in my uh, YouTube channel for calculus 2. Integration by part, the tabular method. We set u to be x. Then we set dv to be e raised to the power 2x. Differentiate this, you get 1. Differentiate this, you get 3. Alright? This is the easiest one. Differentiate this, you get. Sorry. Integrate this, you get half e raised to the power two s. Integrate this, you get one over four 
he raised the boy to legs. Alright? Then when you are done, this will multiply this. This will multiply this. Now, if you want to go further more, here will be zero. And if you want to go again, here is going to be 1 over 4 times 2, which is 8. E raised to the power 2x. And this zero will multiply this, alright? So we have plus, minus, plus. Therefore, the integration is going to give us this and this. What is it? Half s e raised to the power x. Minus this and this. 1 fourth e raised to the power 2x. Alright? Sorry. 2x. Make sure you bring that. Then, you see this one is going to be 0. So this times this minus this times this. Then, this one is going to be 0. So, plus 0. Alright. So we can see clearly that We are still on the question. You can see clearly that the integration is going to give us. We can factor e raised to the power two s out, all right. And with that fact, we are going to be left with. And also, we can bring half out. Alright, don't add plus into it. After we are done with everything, we know we are going to add the plus. Very good. So, only the integration is this. So, we now come and bring the substitution back. So, from here, from here, don't check well, from here, the integration is just from here to here. I hope you are watching. And that is half, no more integral sign. E raised to the power 2s, s minus half, all this over s, e raised to the power s, then you add plus c, then you add plus c, and here, you can see that this can now cancel this, but here you can see that this will cancel this, that is something else. <laughs> Alright. So with this, then we get half s minus half all this over x. And with that one, we can multiply by that plus c. Alright, so this becomes the general solution. Or you can divide by it, no problem. So this becomes the general solution for the differential. <laughs> For the first order differential equation, we have the method of integrating factors. I hope it's clear. It's never difficult to go through the step. This is the step, alright? It will be difficult for you when you are weak in your integration. That is why I have a video which teach all about the integration, alright? Very good. Let's try out the second question. Let's go to our second question. What should I print? Alright. So, alright, please, I'm sorry for this mistake. Alright. The formula is not everything. Plus. It's not like that. It's rather after integration of the numerator, you add plus to the C is on top. Therefore, when we reach this part, it's not that this is plus C, so this is dividing for the school. It's dividing this and the C. So this will not cancel this. It will not be like that. But rather, you can leave it in the form of this. Plus C. Then this is going to be multiplied. So you see, since this one is 
moving to the new breaker to be power negative for at least to be power negative. So a Z rather that is going to multiply the E side. Alright. So that is how it should rather be. So when you let it multiply the E side, then you can see what that is going to give you. So it will affect this and affect everything here. You can see that you can choose not to factorize this one out so that this one comes to multiply the inside. That one is correct, but for you to do it, what I did there, that one is wrong. So you get your final answer to be A, 0. Alright, thank you for that. So which question next? So I picked a second question for this. So this, I'm going to pick the C's question. Or, oh. no problem, let me pick the C's question. Which is, the Y is equal to And we are giving the initial value sine two x minus one seven. Very good. Very good. So now let's talk. First of all, B is standard for. Alright, I was checking if my camera is well placed. Alright, so since you can see this part, so let's continue. We are being standard form. So having this, we can divide both sides by ds so that we can get dy ds to be equal to sine 2x minus y tan x. Alright, and we know that to be in the standard form. You have to bring the one which is attached to the y to this side. 2 plus tan x y. There is not tan x y, but tan multiplying the y. Then here is sine 2x. Very good. Since we are in the standard form, we can now identify our second part, which is p of x and p of x. Very good. Now what's the next thing? Integrating factor. Integrating factor. So that is then we go for that. Then we go for that. So P of S is an S. And when you integrate that S, you get lean sec. Lean sec X. Lean sec X. In case even if you have forgotten, you know that this is sine over cos. And the S is here. If you put U to be equal to cos S, you are going to differentiate this to get negative sine S dS. You come with the substitution, so you see that you are going to get that very good. All right. So by substitution, then we get the integrating factor to be. So this is the integral sign, alright? So after the integration, it's going to be the substitution. So that is 
plane step x. So we know that this will cancel the then the integrating factor for this is set x set x. So now that we have the integrating factor to be set x, as I said, we have two ways to do this. You can go by quoting the formula after here. Or, in case you don't want to quote the formula, what we are saying is that when we are deriving the general solution, we now go and multiply, after getting the integration factor, we now go and multiply it throughout the standard form. So here, we multiply set x by dy yes. plus set x multiplied by tan x y. I hope you can see that. Which is equal to set x multiplied by sin 2x. Oh, the space is too small, but I hope you can see that is set x sin 2x. And then 2x is the argument. Alright. So we have the integrating factor, integrating factor, integrating factor. As I said, I'm using the other way. Alright. Very good. Alright, what I did in the previous example. It's the same thing. Now that you have the integrating factor here, we are saying that this left hand side is coming from the derivative of. Set S Y. Alright? You see, you leave this, differentiate the Y to get the Y to S. So the first function is set S, and the second function is Y. So this left hand side is coming from the derivative of this. Alright? I'm solving it without the formula. And in case you don't chew it or memorize any formula, you can go by this, and you're going to get it. Very good. Very good. Then we write set S sine two S. All right. Please make sure that you don't stick your two functions here. Pick it here. That is the first one is this, and the second one will be the one. Alright, because in case you go back, if you like, go back to where we're proving it, alright? The P of S will maintain here. You are not going to use that. The P of S will maintain here. And that is what we have it, uh, here. And let's look at something. I say that it's coming from the derivative of these two functions, right? Leave this, differentiate this, you get this, alright? Now, you leave the Y to differentiate the set. And when you differentiate set, you get set time. That is why we are going to be set time. So this is coming from the derivative of these two functions. I hope it's now clear. So leave this, differentiate it. Now, leave the y and differentiate the set, which is set time. Alright. So the next thing is that you want to undo it. So we integrate as respect to s. We integrate as respect to s. And when you integrate as respect to s, you will do the derivative. So you get set s y, which is equal to the integral of set s sine 2s ds. As I said, <laughs> if you see the integration, you will become somehow scary, but it's not difficult. Uh, now, there were who would go by using the formula to do the substitution will now get this in the form You see that we have arrived 
are the same thing. All right, you that will go with the formula, you just go and do the substitution. So you are going to skip all these steps. You are going to skip all these steps. All right, uh, you are not wrong. You are correct. You come back to wrong. You are correct. All right. So from here, then for me, I'll go and integrate the right hand side. But for you that will do the substitution, you will now go and pick the integral part only. That is the numerator to go and do the integration. So we move on to come and do the integration. So we have set S Y set S sine two S DS. Here is where we are. Oh, <laughs> something is wrong somewhere. Equal to. All right. So here is where we are. So we take the integral part. Integral set. S sine two S. Now, in case your integral calculus is very good, there is no function or there is nothing that can never be integrated in your hands. No function that can scale it. Here, you can see that we know that this is the same as one over cos S. And this is coming from a double trigonometric identity. Double angles. That here you get 2 sine s cos s dx. And this is going to cancel this. Wow! I hope you can see that. Good. So that is fine. You have to be good in your cap plus 1 and your cap plus 2. And you see that you cannot do calculus 2 without trigonometry. So you have to put in your trigonometry. Alright. So you can see this will cancel this. And we are left with sine s ds. And let me bring the two here. Oh, very good. It's becoming nice. <laughs> so now when you integrate sine, you get negative cos s. Don't add plus e to it. So we now come and do the substitution. So this is only the right hand side, that is the integration part. And if you are the one that use the formula, this is your result for this is your result for this part. Alright. Very good. So therefore. Oh, we are done with that. We have that to be negative 2 cos s. So by substitution, so this is negative 2 cos s. Negative 2 cos s. And after integration, you add plus e. the integration, you add plus e. Therefore, we get y to equal to negative 2 cos s plus cos s over sec. Over sec s. Then plus of the c. But we can still simplify this. We know that this is the same as. 1 over set S plus C. And 1 over set is cos. So we get Y equal to negative or I love mathematics. 1 over negative 2 cos square S plus C. Very good. So this is also the differential equation for the first order. This is the general solution for the first order differential equation. 
using the integrating factor. And as I said, if you go by using the undetermined coefficient for the first order, you are going to end up getting the same thing. Very good. Let's look at the last one. Or I should leave the, the, the rest for you. Alright, let's look at the last one. Alright, please make sure you do the right thing for me as I have been doing the right thing. Or as I have been reminding you of the mistake I did in the first example and the second example. Make sure you apply the same thing. It's not that this will divide this and that is all. No, but rather this. Then we have, so here is going to be 1 over sec x. So here is going to be 1 over sec x multiplying it. So all of this is giving cos x. So you end up getting negative cos square x plus c cos x. This will rather be the general equation. Thank you for your understanding. Bye-bye. All right, which one should I choose? Let's go for one, two, three, four. Let's go for the fourth part. The fourth part, which is x prime is equal to x plus e raised to the power negative t. Very good. To solve the general equation for this, we first leave it in the B is an apple. E is an <laughs> So S. So now the S is now our dependent function. So this is dS O. What is it going to be? dS over D is in terms of what? T, not D Y. D T. Which is equal to S plus e raised to the power negative t and the function is x so we need to bring it to this side to be equal to this since we are in the standard form we now identify our p of s and our p of s so here the p of s will become negative you can tell me oh. I like to add this question. It's P of O, oh, it's supposed not to be P of S, but rather P of T. P of T. P of T. Please, is P of T negative X or negative 1 or 1? A, negative X. B, negative 1. C, C1. I know you to be a good student, so you give me that. P of T is negative 1, since the S is the dependent function here. Alright. And the P of T is. Then we move on to find. The integrating factor, and that is all right. So we go for the integral part, negative one, beautiful. As respect to t, oh, so we need to rewrite the formula, clean everything that is x. That is why you don't need to cheat with it. Do the right thing. And this is going to give you negative O. Negative T. And that is going to give you negative T. Then, we now conclude that the integrating factor is going to be e raised to the power negative T. 
Beautiful. You are the reason why I'm saying beautiful. For me, I know the reason why. Alright. The third part. Let's go to the formula and go our way. And that is in term of T. Don't forget. Integral of P of T. So this will be P of T. So P of T is T raised to 1 negative T. Multiplying the integrating fraction. What is happening? Alright, multiplying the integrating factor with this d t all this over the integrating factor and that is e raised to 1 negative t plus c so for us to conclude y of t is going to be equal to Know that here, don't worry. Let me bring the integration part. This gives e raised to the power negative 1 plus negative 1. What will you get? Alright. And that is going to be negative 2. So this is negative 2. You see. And when you integrate this, you get negative half e raised to 1 negative t. So by substitution, you are going to get negative half e raised to 1 negative t. Over e raised to the power negative t plus. And you know what? You know what? This will clear one of this. So we get half e raised to 1 negative t plus c. Alright, so that is the final solution. Or well, that is the final answer for the differential, the first order differential equation with the method of integrating factor. See, I'm taking my time to explain everything to you. And you know what? The questions I used the first method to do is not the same question I picked for solving with uh, using the integrating factor. So please, those of you who use who tried with the first method? Alright. Who tried with the first method? To solve these questions, I need for you to try. If your result is not giving you the same as what you have here, know that you are on the wrong path. Know that you are wrong. And as I said, the method one and the method two, when you use it to solve, you have to get the same results. You get the same results, but different process. All right. And sometimes, if the question is just raw, solve the following equations, or solve the following differential equations, then that is, there is no restriction. So you just go by your way, pa, 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 then you go. Any of the method that you go by. You can even choose to do it like this. First method, second method. First method, second method, we don't care. But when the person is saying that using the method of IF, go by it. Using the method of only table coefficient, go by it. All right. So I think that is all. And in the next video, that one too is going to be interesting. Let me introduce to you. We are going to. You see that. <laughs> It's not always that I want to introduce you. It's not always that when you want to be in the standard form, it's going to be dy dx plus d of x y is equal to d of x. No, it's not always the time. What 
e the function y here is power 2 or power 3 or power 4 or power that 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 does it mean that we can solve it? alright so we will meet in the next video to do that and that is binomial binomy equation binomy equation it's the name of a mathematician okay alright so he came with that method in solving that general equation as I said from day one it's all about solving general equation see you in the next Please, I'm very sorry. It's not that this will divide this only. No, it will divide this and this. Alright, so here yeah, you can leave it as this. Then this one will multiply everything here. Alright. So you can let this affect the inside or leave it as this, but not the other way around that this will divide this.